Well, good afternoon. We are working on the new truck today. I've actually got a few comments asking about an update on the new truck and how it's doing, so I figure now would be a good time to do that. Uh, right now, I am changing fuel filters. I just got an oil change. I am changing fuel filters before a road trip I'm going on that you guys will get to come along with. Uh, I already changed the rear filter. See, it is uh, sitting right there in the drain pan still. I didn't film that and I probably should have because you'd have got a good shot of me getting a full on diesel shower which is why I'm soaking wet and everything now. So to avoid that again while well, we change the cartridge filter we are letting it drain really really well and while it does that figure update time. First update I put 37's on it. These are a ProComp 37 1250 on a 17 inch I believe that's a ProComp wheel. Uh, once I get done with this here, I'll pull it outside and show you guys what it looks like uh, not in the shop with the hood up and on stand. So you see what it looks like there. Actually, let's do that right now. And we're back see movie magic uh, looks really good huh well I think so I really like how these uh, tan center wheels they are more of a tan outside it looks almost greenish on this camera because GoPros do dumb weird things with colors but I think that breaks up the black pretty good and I really like that these are not the wheels that are going to stay on it or tires either this is actually the wheel and tire combo that's gonna go on my gray Dodge when I uh, turn it into the off-road rig they're not weight rated anywhere near enough to be towing anything more in a small car or a little SUV without going over the weight rating on the back axle because obviously the wheel lift puts all of its weight on the back axle so these are a light duty tire they're gonna be perfect on that other Dodge because then when I air down to low air pressures uh, they're gonna flatten out really well to give good traction and nice flex uh, tire flex sidewall flex off-road so that'll be really nice for that but I had them sitting here, I had this truck sitting here, they fit, so they got put on. Does it rub or do anything? It actually drives really, really nice with these tires on, so that makes me happy. The tires that are coming for it are a 36 by 12 on a 19.5 rim, and they have far high enough weight rating, like beyond what this thing can ever tow, on just those two tires on the back end. So on tire and wheel rating and all that, I will be perfectly legal with anything I can pick up with that wheel lift because they are a stupid heavy rated tire. They're not going to ride good off road or flex very well when you air down but they're going to have the weight rating I need to be legal while towing. Uh, other update, I got um, magnets for the side and I did magnets instead of stickers, yes stickers or decals whatever you want to call wood look. Uh, a whole lot more professional and a whole lot nicer. It actually looks like crap there in the sun right now because everything's filthy dirty. But yes, decals would look better, but I bought this truck to be more of my personal daily driver truck that can also tow when needed. So I didn't want to do decals because when I do personal daily driver stuff or personal road trips like what we're doing tomorrow that we're getting ready for that you'll get to see. Um, I don't want decals and DOT numbers and a lot on the side of my pickup that I'm using as a daily driver when I go to dinner with family or on a road trip or just running around town. So magnets, yeah, not as professional and nice looking, but I'm legal when I need to be and I'm just in my pickup when I want to be. So it is what it is. So what else do we have for updates? Uh, oh, that top box right there is uh, a new gate control arm. Uh, you've all seen my problems with my gate where I finally after years of having a broken gate um, One year really that was over exaggeration, but after one year of having a broken gate. I finally bought a whole new system Installed it had a working gate for the first time in my life and then a week later it got hit by lightning and quit and I was super stubborn for a super long time and refused to fix it because I was so mad that after finally spending all that money it broke so quick but then I did fix it finally. I didn't fix it correctly, I just fixed it, which is how I fix things. And uh, made a quick little video about it and posted it on here for you guys to see. 
just for fun. And uh, I never mentioned the manufacturer of that gate controller. I never said a bad thing about them. I never tried to get it warrantied, nothing, because it got hit by lightning. It was not their fault. Totally expected for an electronic product to fail when it gets hit by lightning. But Ghost Controls, who manufactures that whole gate controller system, saw that video somehow and messaged me and said, hey, we appreciate your ingenuity, but we'd love to send you a replacement arm. And we appreciate your ingenuity was their nice way of saying, hey, dummy, that's not right. We need to fix that. So they sent out that top box right there is the whole new replacement arm. They didn't say I had to say anything nice about them in the video. They didn't say I had to mention it at all. I never once said a bad thing about them or anything, never asked them. They just, I don't know how, saw that video, offered to send out a new arm completely free. Here's one of the shop cats. That is Sarah. Riley named it. Um, so yes, huge props to Ghost Controls for sending that out. Uh, the thing got struck by lightning. I wasn't even going to try to warranty it because that's not a failure of their product. But they offered to send one out anyway, so thank you guys very much. That is great customer service. So speaking of companies not asking for anything in return, a company that did ask for something in return is, and this has been like two months and I haven't done anything about it, no. Those are new headlights for the Jeep. Here. Oxbeam. This company reached out to me and asked if I would like to try out and review one of their six switch switch pods. Say that five times fast. Uh, to control lighting and accessories and all that. And of course, when they offered something free, I said yes, because they didn't say I had to say anything nice about it. They just said I had to review it and mention it. So they said they would like if I showed an install video and then gave my honest thoughts on it. So this has been sitting on my shelf for two months because I thought I was going to put it in the Jeep and didn't. Then I thought maybe the Snowcat and didn't. And we have an update for the Snowcat too. Uh, then I got this truck. And this truck does not have the upfitter switches on the dash. So this will be perfect because I don't want to drill a bunch of holes and put toggle switches in this nice Laramie interior. So we're going to mount this in this truck and run it. And I don't even need to run it for any serious amount of time to give you guys a good review. Because when I opened that box and looked at it, and then one day another project we're going to do is fix the doors in my shop so I don't have to prop them open with a T-post. But when I opened that box and looked at what they sent me, I realized it's the exact same switch pod I've had in my red tow truck for two years. Um, Works great, I love it, it's giving me zero problems. It is just a panel you mount wherever, and you put whatever sticker you want, or whatever switch you want, depending on what you want it to run. I've got front light bar, front fog lights, rear cargo lights, which are the ones up there in the headache rack, and then the backup lights, which are down low, shining under the wheel light for when, wheel lift for when you're hooking up to cars, you have light. Two years. Not a single issue, has worked great. Uh, it automatically dims and brightens depending on the outside light and flawless. So, my review of that Oxbeam switch pod they sent me, it's great. I really like it and I've liked it for two years. I've been testing it this whole time and didn't even know it. So, uh, there you go, Oxbeam. Does that work for you? Hopefully so, because that's about all I'm gonna do. Uh, other than when I install this in this truck, I will film it. So, other update. Uh, Snowcat. It's gone. I sold it. So, why did I sell the Snowcat? Well, because I had someone who wanted to buy it and they wanted to pay enough that I wanted to sell it. So, I had a Snowcat all summer and then right before winter, I sold the Snowcat. I know that doesn't make sense, but what an old time logger customer of mine told me years ago that kind of stuck with me is the best time to sell something is when you have a buyer for it. And I had a buyer for the Snowcat, so I sold it. But that brings us to our road trip that we're getting this thing ready for, is we're gonna get the Snowcat replacement because obviously we still need snow tracks and all that to get out into the snow. So our road trip that we're getting ready for with this truck right now, tomorrow out into uh, central, northern Idaho, 
Let's go get the snowcat replacement. So you'll have to stick around for the, the next video to see what that is. Okay, what else do we have update? Uh, got a TIG welder, got a plasma cutter, uh, got some chicken on the welder I gotta finish, got a new air compressor, got a, some new metal here that is gonna be the frame reinforcement for this truck because I'm not super happy with the frame reinforcement on it. So I'm going to go wild and reinforce the heck out of it so that it holds nice and straight when that wheel lift on the back gets loaded heavy. Uh, that bigger box on the bottom and that one over there is just a, a Harbor Freight engine stand I bought so that I can lift the bed off this truck to do that frame reinforcement. So that product's gonna have to wait until after we get back from this road trip because this uh, sale popped up and I gotta go buy this thing right now. So that's what we're doing tomorrow. For now though, it looks like our fuel filter is drained. This is a, a light that the battery just died on because I took too long talking. Cool. Uh, but I'm gonna get that fuel filter changed and then uh, I think that's all the updates I have for right now. But the next video is gonna be a road trip up into Idaho. So we all love road trips. Oh, one big, big update. Speaking of road trip, but I can't use it on this road trip. I got me one of these little guys. So this is a DJI drone. Um, shoots in like 5.2K and 20 megapixel photos and all kinds of other fancy stuff and all that. It's gonna be great. It does automatically flying around and filming you and all this other stuff that I don't know how to do. It's gonna be awesome, but I can't film anything with it or show you anything with it because to fly that one, I have to get licensed with the FAA under part 107 and all that stuff. So I bought it. I'm studying for my whole test thing right now to get that certification license, whatever it is. And once I do, we will add some drone footage to this whole deal. So I believe that's all the updates I have for you guys. I think that's it for now. Like I said, road trip is going to have a big update. So I'm going to get back to work on this thing. Uh, let me, that makes it look like I'm plugging that product way too hard and I'm not. Um, I'm going to get back to work on this thing. Next time I see you, we will be going on a road trip. So I will catch you guys there.